Howdy, I wanted to have a conversation with you about gas masks and unreal expectations. And I didn't post a picture of one in particular. I'm not picking on Mira or any other brand. If 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 you need one, if you're going to buy one, get a good one. And I do recommend Mira. They They make an incredible product. But as you can see, they're not cheap. They cost a little bit, yo. And the old, you know, surplus ones dating way back, I would be a little sketchy on on those, to be honest. And and there are ways you can find out. You can check them over good. There are ways you can tell whether or not they will still function. So let's talk about this a little bit. And again, I'm not picking on Mirror or anything else. That's probably one of the better better brands to go with, to be honest. But what I wanted to speak to specifically, uh, especially, especially, is how long that a cartridge will last. And we will get to that. But uh, before we get there, let's take a look at some information that's readily available to us. Now, uh, this, I will leave, uh, I will leave the links for everything that I speak about. I'll leave the links in the description so that you can go, you can look it over yourself at your own will. Because I know on that screen out there, you really can't read that. And I get that. So I want you to have the source so that you can read it for yourself, pass on the information if you feel that you need to. So, uh, this I think was from West Virginia or one of their pages, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where I actually have this link from. And it says, uh, the page is titled coping with an attack, a quick guide to dealing with a, uh, dealing with biological chemical and dirty bomb attacks. And, I would most certainly um, tell people to go download this PDF and have a copy of it. I uh, may even want to print it out a few times, you know. Uh, this seems to be a pretty good document, to be real honest. So what I want to particularly focus on, though, is radiological threats. Not chemical, not biological. I want to focus more on radiological threats. And the reason why is because... As I reported on today, SARMAP was put into service and, you know, there's a lot of things on the nuclear agenda that's uh, really been um, been pushed forward and by many countries, not just Russia. And so there are rightfully so um, concerns about nuclear war or nuclear conflict of some kind. And I wouldn't tell people not to be concerned, but I want people to be aware because you are going to have a ton of people out there trying to sell you gas masks right now because they've got an affiliate link for you to use. So, yeah, so you can save money. It's it's all about you saving money, right? That That's what it's all about. It's, it's, it's helping you, right? Right. Yeah. Be careful, folks, because some of these folks aren't helping, okay? All, all they're doing is helping themselves. And a lot of the individuals out there that tell you to run out and buy a gas mask, especially for a nuclear war or some type of radiological event, uh, they don't know very much. They're not very bright. See, when we talk about bugging out, it's a, it's a pretty popular stance that it's foolish to have a bug out bag and know where to bug out to just heading off to the woods so you can go hunt your way to prosperity is not going to work out very well for you neither is expecting to survive the alpacalypse because you bought um, it's not up there now, a $370 gas mask which again is a good gas mask I'm not pooping on the gas mask I'm telling you that it has limitations that these cats on YouTube that are trying to sell you gas masks aren't telling you, okay? They won't tell you this. Why? Because you're probably not going to buy a gas mask. You know, the interesting thing is, is back in the day, you know, Cold War times, when people were really worried about nuclear conflict do you know countries was giving out cyanide tablets yeah there were countries that was giving out cyanide tablets not a gas mask so you can prolong yourself for eight to 20 hours or what have you 
per cartridge. We're going to get to that. But cyanide tablets, so you didn't have to suffer a slow, agonizing death from radiation sickness. That's a sobering thought, isn't it? So, now that we're pulled back down on ground level and off the clouds, let's talk a little bit about just dirty bomb attacks. This isn't nuclear war, this is a dirty bomb attack. It's a radiological event but it's not like the Sarmat just went off over you, yo. So pre-attack, they say, and this is what they're saying, stockpile three days of non-perishable food, um, stockpile three days of water, uh, de develop family contact plan, how to get in touch via phone, internet, you know. Uh, stockpiling antibiotics is not recommended for whatever reasons they said. You got to understand, this was put out by the government, so... Um, purchasing potassium iodide tablets, a Geiger counter, or a gas mask is, and it's capitalized, not recommended. Let me, let me repeat that. Pre-attack for, or, you know, pre-dirty bomb attack, they're saying purchasing potassium iodide tablets, a Geiger counter, or a gas mask is not recommended. Holy cow. This is for a dirty bomb attack. A, a, an actual nuclear, nuclear missile blowing up or a nuclear bomb blowing up. Not a dirty bomb, but an actual nuclear device is way worse. Way worse. Okay? And they're telling you for a dirty bomb, dirty bomb attack, don't bother you. Hmm. Post-attack says you have time. The amount of radiation from a dirty bomb is unlikely to give you radiation, sickness, or cancer. Follow uh, instructions of emergency personnel. Leave the area by foot. Do not use public transportation to avoid contaminating buses or subways. Do not immediately rush to the emergency room. Now, if we scroll down, we will see a section here that will go further into dirty bomb attacks. It talks about what is a dirty bomb. It talks about what is radiation. It talks about uh, whether or not a dirty bomb will make you sick. Uh, what type of terrorist events might involve radiation? What are signs of a radiation attack? How um, how fast do I have to leave the area? Okay. Um, how can I protect myself during a radiation emergency? Um, you recommended not using public transportation when evacuating from dirty bomb attack, but what about using my private vehicle? Uh, let's see, I was a mile from detonation. Am I going to get sick? Will I be able to decontaminate my home? Should I buy a radiation detector? No. Unless you have been trained, you will not be able to interpret the readings. Many of the Geiger counters available commercially are worthless or uncalibrated. Let me say that again. Many of the Geiger counters available commercially are worthless or uncalibrated. Remember that as they're trying to sell them to you. Should I purchase potassium iodide tablets for protection against radiation? No. Potassium iodide available over-the-counter, protects people from thyroid cancer caused by radioactive iodine, a cancer-causing agent that can be released in nuclear explosions. Uh, K should only be taken in a radiation emergency that involves the release of radioactive iodine. The only radioactive iodine, such as an accident of a nuclear power plant or the explosion of a nuclear bomb, a dirty bomb will not contain radioactive iodine, um, so pills are no use for a dirty bomb. Okay, and that is what makes the difference when it comes to a nuclear attack, okay? But I want to make this very clear, okay, what it is good for, what it's not good for. I'm not telling you not to buy any of this at all. I'm not even remotely hinting that you should not buy any of this. What I want you to do is I want you to take what I'm telling you even further and learn even more about the limitations of your equipment because there is a whole lot of people that are selling or trying to sell you a lot of hopium. 
a lot of hopium. For my cartridge filter, I'll leave this. This is a Wikipedia page. Cartridge filters, gas mask at all. Cartridge, cartridges can have a limited life. If the filter cartridges that attach to the mask are outdated, have been opened to the air, are damaged, you are not protected, blah, blah, blah. This stuff, if you're buying gas mask, you should actually already know this stuff. But I'm going to leave the link. If you do not know this stuff and you are interested in buying a gas mask, I recommend that you read, look into all the links I provide, and then dig further. I am not the end-all be-all when it comes to this conversation. But what I'm telling you is you've got a lot of people out there that are trying to sell you hopium. Remember what I, what I mentioned a while ago about the people that have bug-out bags and no place to bug out to? Remember that? Remember how it's not a bright idea just to walk in the woods and figure you're going to hunt and fish your way into prosperity? Why? Because it's very unrealistic. You know what else is unrealistic? Surviving a nuclear war if you're near ground zero. But hey, I don't know why nations would give their citizens cyanide tablets. I mean, maybe they love them or something, right? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Don't know. But... Here, let's get to the meat. This is the Wikipedia article. Sorry, I don't know where the other one was from, but you'll get the link for it either way. So, gas mask, Wikipedia. Tell me, Mr. Wiki, how long does a gas mask cartridge last? Well, most combined gas mask filters, which, by the way, is what most of you are probably buying, will last around eight hours in a biological or chemical situation filters against specific chemical agents can last up to 20 hours right right i know they didn't say radiation but if you look it's not you know you're gonna find the 8 to 20 hour period for pretty much any of the gambit and depending on the quality of the mask you know depends on how long and again what it's specifically targeted for but you need to know these things before you just go out and and purchase a, a gas mask. You really need to know these things before you just run out and jump on that stuff. I'm not telling you not to get one. I'm not telling you Mira is a bad company. Like I said, they're probably the best company when it comes to this equipment. What I'm telling you is not to have unrealistic expectations. And don't let these YouTube influencing add to cart pushers convince you that you need to buy you know this or else you're gonna die because let me tell you what if you're prepping for a nuclear war and that is what you're buying my first question is is where are you going because if you don that mask you damn well better have a plan to go somewhere where you don't need it Otherwise, I hope you've got a warehouse, a warehouse of gas mask filters, and I hope you've figured out a way to change them out without any agents getting inside. Shalom.